Hey there, it's Diane Forster and welcome to I Have Today, where we talk about the art of intentional living. And this is the show that inspires, educates, and empowers you through life's transitions. And I am so excited to be back. We've been on hiatus for uh, a bunch of weeks now. I think we've been two and a half months, right, Kelly? Mm -hmm. And we are back. It's 2021. It's January. It's the start of a new year. And we are so excited to bring you this premiere episode because we've got an amazing topic, a fantastic guest, and some great new segments that we've added to the show. So if you are here for the first time, I want to say welcome. You can catch us live on E360 TV every Monday at 11.03 a.m. Pacific time. Yes, we start at 11.03, but you can also catch us live on YouTube, on my YouTube channel at I Have Today with Diane Forster, as well as my Facebook page, I Have Today with Diane Forster. And on on Facebook is where you can send in your questions and comments. So if you are there, be sure to say hello. Let me know where you're calling in or watching in from, tuning in from. And uh, any questions that you have or comments, please share them there. All right. So here we are. It's a brand new year. And um, we're living in very interesting times. And I was just speaking to my guest off, off camera, which I'll share with you in a moment, about finding you know, the gifts and the blessings in your life, no matter what's going on. And you know, seeing that the glass is half full versus half empty. And I thought today with the premiere episode, I wanted to bring on an expert and talk about topics that are really going to empower you. And the, the name of this show today, our theme today is the best investment you can make. The best investment you can make. And the best investment you can make is an investment in you, right? We always think it's money and there's a lot of money conversation going on during this episode. But this show is about empowering you, inspiring you, educating you, and giving you practical tools, tips, and strategies that you can implement in your life today, because today is all we have. So on that note, I want to say tune in, get yourself comfortable, tag friends, let others know about this show, because we've got powerful information for you here today and some things that are really going to inspire you and move you into that action in your life. All right. So what we do every week on the show is we start off with an intention statement. And an intention statement is a power statement that you can use in your life, use it today, use it all week long. And our intention statement today is, I have today to invest in me first. I have today to invest in me first. And so on my Instagram page at Diane Forster Official, there's a little button there, a little icon that says wallpapers. And every week, my amazing team makes these beautiful wallpapers that you could use as your screensaver for your phone so that you see it every time you look at your phone, which statistics say is 150 times a day. And through that repetition, you're going to start anchoring that into your subconscious mind and start having it have that powerful, profound, positive effect on your life. So... Again, the intention statement is, I have today to invest in me first. All right? All right. So we have a brand new segment on the show that I'm so excited to share with you, you know, because there's so much negative news in the world. And as someone who worked in, in uh, you know, the television industry for many years, I know what you know, how much news there is. The average television station runs 53 hours of news a week. It's crazy, right? So what we want to do here today is uh, we want to share with you a segment that we are calling Headlines of Happiness. Headlines of Happiness. This is feel. These are feel-good stories. So these are just a couple of stories that touched my heart last week that I wanted to share with you. All right. The first one is a GoFundMe campaign has raised more than $46,000 for a homeless man who's returned 
who returned an 80 year old grandmother's lost wallet found in a dumpster. This is such a great story. So a local community in the San Francisco Bay Area is raising money for a man who returned a lost wallet belonging to an 80 year old grandmother. A GoFundMe campaign for Sean Curry has racked up more than $46,000 as of Tuesday. Curry is a man experiencing homelessness in Marin County. Last month, he found a wallet inside a dumpster by the Camson Coffee Shop in San Rafael and returned it to its rightful owner with its contents intact. The wallet belongs to Evelyn Topper. She had stopped by Camson Coffee on December 9th to pick up a decaf chai tea latte and a bubble tea to deliver to her 12-year-old granddaughter. After paying for the two beverages, Topper tucked her wallet into her vest pocket, which she forgot to zip up. When she got home, her pocket was empty and the wallet was nowhere to be found. Evelyn's daughter and granddaughter have started a GoFundMe campaign to help Curry find shelter and to raise money so he can use his construction skills to create a sustainable row of tiny houses for the San Rafael homeless community at large. Isn't that amazing? Who knew that returning a wallet to someone I didn't know would turn into something that was going to spark this? It's going to spark a new movement to help people help themselves and have a better life. Thanks to KPix and from Insider.com. Don't you love that story? All right, we have another one. This is from CBS News. A doctor clears $650,000 in medical debt for patients. Dr. Omar Atik opened the Arkansas Cancer Clinic 29 years ago to provide cancer care to an underserved community in Pine Bluff. Then he split his time between the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences Medical Center and the clinic, becoming very busy. When he decided to close the clinic last March, he hired another company to collect outstanding payments from patients. Then he realized how much people were paying. Just browsing through it, I realized that there were patients that were paying $10 for months on end or $5 or $50. Patients wanted to pay, but they just didn't have the ability to pay. At the same time, the country was in grip and still is in grip from the COVID-19 pandemic that has devastated the lives in so many ways. Antique spoke to his wife and kids about it, and they decided they didn't need the money. His patients did. Luckily, we were blessed to have the opportunity to just forego the debt. Just cancel it. So we did. We didn't luckily need the money and somebody else did. And so it was done. Isn't that an incredible story? So he canceled about $650,000 in debt for his cancer patients. He didn't want the attention for the good deed, but he did say many of the patients reached out to him to thank him. It's amazing. He said that to him, it's not just a story about debt forgiveness, but the fact that we have medical debt and we have people who, for no fault of their own, are going bankrupt trying to get healthy. Yay, you, Dr. Antique, and your amazing family. Okay, and our last story is such a good feel, such a feel good story. A nurse who works with COVID patients just won the million dollar lottery jackpot. We can all agree that healthcare workers on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic deserve all good things in life. One North Carolina nurse now has a pocket change to treat herself to at least some of them. Terry Watkins works in the COVID unit at a long-term facility in Durham, and she just won $1 million in the jackpot. She just seen some of the things that I've had to see. I am very thankful, she said. I had been praying for something to help me with this situation. It really is a great thing and I am very, very blessed. It's a rough time to be a COVID unit nurse as the pandemic rages uncontrollably. Many are working grueling hours and isolating themselves away from their families. So when Lottery called her with the news, she had a hard time believing her good fortune. So you're telling me, I, I don't believe you, she said. And then they said, yes, this is true. And it really sank in. And she screamed, oh, my God, oh, my God. It's still something that I really don't believe. And in some ways, I'm still shocked. I just got to take time and put it in the right place. How awesome is that? So congratulations to you, Terry. What an amazing story. All right. 
So we're going to be doing these headlines of happiness and bring good news to the world during our time together. All right. So now we're going to pivot to one more segment that we're adding to the show. And this is called Magical Manifestation Moments. And I want to share this with you because we are all powerful manifestors. Whether you realize that or not, you are getting what you're asking for, whether you realize it or not. Since a lot of the theme of the, of the show today is about money, if you're focused on you know, debt and your debt, you're getting more of that. And so what I want to do is share some of my stories as a powerful manifester and other people's stories as well. Fantastical, magical manifestation moments. So I'm going to share this story with you. This is such a great story about how when you give, the universe delivers to you tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. It was a few years ago. I was still living in Chicago, getting ready to move to San Diego. And I was out in San Diego for a visit. And I was visiting with a friend. And I decided I was staying downtown. And I decided to go for a walk along the Embarcadero. And it was a beautiful day in January, actually. And as I was coming back from my walk, there was a Starbucks. And I thought, I'll go in and, and get a cup of coffee. And as I approached the Starbucks, there was this young man sitting on the ground. He was homeless. I could tell he had his backpack. He looked like he was maybe 19 or 20 years old. And he had a little uh, uh, paper cup in front of him and he was asking for money. And I made note of it when I walked in and I, um, I said to myself as I walked in, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick up lunch for him on my way in there. And so I did. I got my coffee and I bought him a, you know, a, a lunch and a bottled water. And I think the total bill was $15, it was something around $15. And so I walked out of the store and I walked up to him and, and he, we locked eyes and he was just about to ask me for money. And I said, here you go. I, I bought you lunch. And he looked at me and he just said, oh, my God, thank you. God bless you, you know, and and he was so touched in that moment. I said, you're welcome. God bless you. And I just went, walked along and um, kept walking back about to continue the rest of my day. Now, I am not kidding you. I did not get 50 feet away from him. And my phone starts buzzing that I have a message. It's from my accountant. We had an issue in my business. There was this $1,500 um, bill that I was being charged for that was discrepant. And it had been two years we were dealing with this thing. And she sends me a message in that moment. And she said, all right, so you know that the, the issue that we've been dealing with, I just heard back from them and they finally cleared it up and they wiped it away. You owe nothing. It was $1,500. In, in that minute, two minute of time, I did a service of giving without any expectation, with no attachment, strictly from love, to give to somebody else something that was worth $15, and the universe instantly rewarded me with $1,500. So I'm sharing this story with you because it is magical, but it is the way the law of attraction works. It is the way the universe moves. So don't give to get, just give from the heart, but understand that call this the boomerang effect. What we put out there does come back to us. So we would love to hear some of your manifestation stories as well. So in the next coming week or two, we're going to have a, a link for you to share your stories with us. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Okay. And now it is time for my interview. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest. My guest is an entrepreneur, international speaker, best-selling author, mentor, philanthropist, licensed CPA for 35 years, and a chartered global management accountant. Sharon Lecter is the premier expert for financial literacy and entrepreneurial success. Sharon co-authored 15 books in the Rich Dad series, including the international bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and she built the empire empire into the world's leading personal finance brand. She released three best-selling books with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and was featured in the movie Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy. 
Sharon has worked with major brands like Disney and Time Warner and served two US presidents as financial literacy advisor. She is the CEO of Pay Your Family First and her career focuses on improving your financial IQ, assessing untapped potential and creating your own legacy. And today she will share some of her brilliance, some of her story of reinvention, her new book that's about to premiere and more. So welcome to the show, Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much, Diane. I'm so happy to be with you. I'm so thrilled you're back. This is a great show. I love listening to you. Thank you so much. Well, I am so honored and grateful to have you as the first guest of the new year. Love it. Thank you. Yes, yes. All right. So um, what I'd like for you to do with our audience, you know, um, is share a little bit about you, your story, um, you know, any transitions you've gone through in life and what has led you to be this expert in financial literacy? Well, thank you, Diane. I'll try. I've been around a long time. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. Um, I grew up in a very lower middle class home. My, neither of my parents even had high school degrees. My dad ended up running the engineering school for the Navy. So he was a pretty smart cookie, but totally self-taught. But his, my parents' goal was their, their girls would get a college education. So um, I, the day I graduated from college was probably one of the few days I saw my dad emotional. And I went on, I, I, but we lived in a little tiny house between my dad's used car lot and my mother's beauty shop. We owned rental properties that I had to scrub out bathrooms when I was 10, 10 years old between tenants and Orange Grove. So I, I just lived in this entrepreneurial environment and I hated it. I swear I'd never be an entrepreneur. All my friends, their parents were CEOs or military officers. So I said, I'm going to become a sophisticated professional. So I got my degree in accounting. I was one of the very first women in public accounting way back in the middle 70s and loved it. I was a young single woman in hot Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, having a great time. But I was working really long hours. About the ripe old age of 25, I'm going, if I'm going to work this hard, I should probably be working for myself. And all of a sudden, my parents looked a whole lot smarter. One of my clients invited me to join him for, uh, he was investing in a company. And I still remember doing the old yellow legal pad because this was before PCs and cell phones, doing pros and cons. Didn't help me a bit. I could argue both sides. But my hand took off across the top of the page and said, why not? And that's really still my personal mantra. Why not do something different? Why not solve a problem? Why not serve a need? Why not take the road less traveled? So I made the decision to, to go with him. It's probably still the worst business decision of my life. But as Napoleon Hill said, every adversity provides a seed of an equal or greater benefit. Had I not made that decision, I wouldn't have met a young man named Michael Lecter, who we've just celebrated 40 years of marriage. So I definitely got yeah. instant feedback, worst business decision, great life decision. But that started my entrepreneurial journey. I started a woman's magazine and sold that. And then I started the talking children's book industry with the inventor where the books had sound strips down the side. And we took that. We said, well, how can we get parents to trust us? Because back then they didn't have electronics. So we had the great opportunity to align with Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street, Marvel Comics, helped us explode the company. So I learned so much in doing that. And then we sold that company and our oldest son went off to college and got into credit card debt. I was pretty mad at him, but even more mad at myself. We didn't even know he had a credit card. He got to college campus and he had the table that greeted him, free pizza, free money, free t-shirt, free money. And so we were. he got himself into debt, but uh, that was December of 1992. And that's when I dedicated the rest of my career to financial literacy and financial education. Fast forward a few years, I met Robert Kiyosaki because he'd actually gone to see my husband, Mike's an intellectual property attorney, to patent the idea for a game called Cash Flow. And it, was the, it demonstrated what I was teaching about the importance of buying, building, and creating assets. And so I volunteered to help him commercialize it with my experience with the talking book company. And during the process, he told me he wanted to charge $200 for the board game. I said, that's kind of pricey. Maybe you should write a brochure that um, kind of talks about your philosophy and what it means that would convince people that they'd want to buy the game. So he asked me to write the brochure with him and to be his partner. And that brochure was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. 
And this came out in 1997, April of 1997. And the world said, no, 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 we want more. So we thought, okay, so we'll write three books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cashflow Quadrant, Guide to Investing. And they, no, 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 we want more. So for the 10 years we worked together, we did 15 books. And then I also launched the series Rich Dad Advisor books. And we explored around the world um, before Amazon, believe it or not, and before the internet. So it was because people found value and told others. And when I made the decision to leave the Rich Dad company in 2007, it's because Robert and I were no really longer aligned with where we wanted to go. And so I tell people, sometimes you have to close a door in your life so other doors of opportunity will open. And not knowing what was in store for me, because I kind of thought Rich Dad was my legacy, I made the decision because it was the right one for me at the time. And that's when, as you shared, a few months later, I got the phone call from President Bush. And I served both President Bush and President Obama. And I tell people that story because I wouldn't have had that phone call had I still been at Rich Dad. And then we know what was happening to the economy in 2008. That's when I got the phone call from the Napoleon Hill Foundation inviting me to come in and help reinvigorate his teachings because the world was in such economic turmoil. I wouldn't have gotten that phone call had I still been a rich dad. So again, I share that story because sometimes I have to challenge people watching and listening. Is there a door in your life you need to close to make room for door, other doors of opportunity to open? So that kind of brings me to my company, Pay Your Family First. I'm still speaking and teaching and getting laws changed to bring financial education into schools. And my most recent book, which we're going to talk a little bit about more later, is called Exit Rich, and it's with Inc. Magazine. I'm very excited about it because it really helps people understand how to build their business so that it's a strong asset that generates money for them. Most people think they own a business, but they really own a job. And I want them to take that job and turn it into this economic engine called a business that can be not just successful, but sustainable and scalable and eventually saleable. So that kind of brings you where I am today. So amazing. And I remember, well, I've, I've heard you speak many times. I, I remember meeting you um, at the, you know, uh, CEO Space Forum a few years ago and read, read several of your books, you know, and of course, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that is like mandatory, that was mandatory reading for my children. And, you know, oh my gosh, Sharon, the body of work that you've done and, and you're still so, you know, look, you've got another book coming out and and the, the timing of this is so good right now because here we are going through the most unprecedented time in history that, that this, what's happening right now is affecting every single person on the planet. No one is immune to it. And here we go through, uh, you know, industries and businesses, family businesses and are, 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 are becoming extinct. I mean, they are going to have to close their doors. Like you just said, it's very, very frightening. And so, um, and, and repivot and reinvent and, and, um, you know, having this knowledge is essential in, wherever you are in your current situation and whatever's coming up next for you so that this doesn't happen to you again, right? Oh, it's so important. We have to adjust and adapt. I mean, we have to control. Um, we only can control what we do, what we hear, what we put into our mind and how we structure ourselves to serve others. And successful companies do one of two things, solve a problem or serve a need. We have a few of those these days. So there's mm -hmm. tremendous opportunity, but you're so right. This year has been, a, I thought 2008 and nine was kind of a global reset. No, 2020 was definitely a global reset. And you can allow yourself to be overtaken by it and drowned by it, or you can be at the top of the wave and say, I'm going to adjust and adapt. And some mm -hmm. people, you know, a lot of people are using the word pivot and I go, if you know what you want in life and you have a definite purpose, let's not call it pivot. Let's just call it adjust and adapt because your end goal, your major purpose in life doesn't change, but the world has changed. So you have to adjust your theory, adjust your approach and adjust your message maybe, but continue focusing on what your outcome is and be able to serve as many people as possible. I love that so much. Adjust and adapt. 
I'm going to, I'm going to be using that instead of pivot because pivot the same thing. It's just, I feel like it's overused and it doesn't quite nail it, but that does. Thank you for that. All right. So, so can you share, I mean, uh, you know, it, amazing success, but we like to talk about, you know, transitions and reinventions and we all go through them in life. And can you share, you know, what's been the most challenging thing for you in your life? Well, thank you. And I appreciate the question. Um, for most time, when people would ask me about for business, it obviously was making that decision to leave Rich Dad. But eight years ago, I lost my youngest son. And I was working very hard, busy. And but that just, you know, that stops you in your tracks. And I went into what I would call neutral, um, a, a world of numbness for several years, still working, but I just didn't have the same zest. Uh, there was a part of me that was just gone. And it took yeah. me a long time. Um, in fact, about four years ago, I decided that maybe I should retire. Got a lot mm. of pushback from family and friends. And I even think I was hearing him in my ears saying, get over it, mom, there's more for you to do. And especially this year, Diane, so, so many people have been stopped in their tracks, um, whether it be a death or illness or financial setback, a divorce. Um, it's hard. You have to get through that grief and sometimes that grief lingers on, but I want to share, you know, you're still here for a reason and what you've been through has made you stronger. What you've been through, you're, you've learned how to deal with it or you're on your way to dealing with it. And you can help others that are going through the same thing. And so I made this decision at that time that I needed to play, get back into the game and play big again. And, you know, I realized that my opportunities were all there. I just had put blinders on because of the fear and the, and the, and the grief. I put blinders on to the rest of the world. And once I released them, I had all kinds of wonderful things happen that were right there, you know, main stages, sharing the stage with all kinds of incredible people, being invited to be in the Think and Grow Rich Legacy movie. And then early 2020, I was on the world's greatest motivators television show. Incredible, but I didn't want to do it alone. I wanted to share it. And so I launched the Play Big Movement pod, uh, Facebook group. Also, I have that podcast, but the Play Group Movement um, Facebook group is I wanted to share what I was doing. So I share every single week. And it's a, a platform for people to come who want to play a bigger game. And so the Play Big Movement is about being number one in your field, living your legacy. Just like you lived your legacy that day that you bought lunch for that young man. Okay, we we create our legacy every single day with every heart we touch. So the play big movement is being number one in your field, living your legacy, and creating maximum impact. If you're going to work hard, why don't you play a bigger game? Work just as hard, but in, and increase your impact exponentially. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote Exit Rich. I wanted people to understand the fundamental things that you can put into your business early on so that it grows the foundation that's strong so you can scale it. You build a house, you go down first, then up. And so that's the whole reason I wrote Exit Rich to help people create that economic engine called a business that becomes an asset that works for you. That's fantastic. I love it. Living your legacy and creating maximum impact. I know I, I say, you know, you can crawl or you can soar. You, you really can. And actually when you're soaring, when you are thinking bigger, making the most impact, leveraging your time, sorry, there's a little background noise. Um, but when you're really doing that, it's, it's, actually easier than the crawl the crawl is so hard you know it's such a struggle so just to really how ask yourself those right questions so how can i really leverage my time making the greatest impact possible you know uh, creating the most you know revenue for my family my life my you know legacy because the more you do that then the more you can the more you can serve I love that. So, and your theme today of investing in yourself, part of it is surrounding yourself with the right people, like getting involved with Diane, getting involved with me, getting involved with networks that can support you. That power of association is so important for playing big. And a lot of people don't do it because they don't have that self-confidence. And I want to give them, you know, you are, you're fabulous. You are an expert. 
and spread your wings and find those people that will surround you with love and support. And in doing that, you have the right people around you, your self-confidence grows automatically. Yes, it does. And the right people around you want to lift you and support you. And you, like you just said, we are all experts in some or several things. Um, but there's many, many things that we need help with. So don't let that fear, that doubt, that insecurity get in your way. You can't possibly know all that. You're only supposed to, sh you know, shine the way you're supposed to shine. You know, you like you are an expert at this. This is why you, you're passionate about it, which is why you're, you know, making such an impact on the world. And it's be able to stay in that and then tap into all those other resources to help and support you because they do want to help, you know, they are there for you. Um, okay, can you talk a little bit more about um, the book? Because, um, what you know, when is it available? You know, how can people find out more information about it? I love it. This is Exit Rich. I'm so excited about this. Um, it's basically the 6P method to sell your business for huge profits, but it's also how to build a business so that you can eventually sell it. Steve Forbes, a friend of mine, he says, so many business owners end up leaving equity on the table. This book is a gold mine for entrepreneurs. And again, it's a roadmap for how to build that foundation. If you want to build a business that is sustainable, if you want to build a business that you can attract investors, if you want to build, if you are, if you have a business that you want to sell and you want to know how to position it, all of those, this is the book for you. And I'm, it was done last year, but because of the pandemic, the publication was delayed. And in doing so, Inc. Magazine stepped up and said, we want this under our imprint. So we're very excited about that. We have incredible testimony. The book itself will be um, available in April, but for your show and for the people that are want the copy now, I've made it available so that you can get it immediately on electronic. If you go to exitrichbook.com forward slash buy, you can get the electronic version right away and I will mail you the hardcover and it's even cheaper on my site than it is on Amazon. So exitrichbook.com forward slash buy, and we will include the postage. So just go in there, get your copy so that you can get the tools you need right now to build the success. Because my co-author is one of the top mergers and acquisitions people and the top female business broker. So between us, we have over 70 years of experience of building strong brands, strong companies, and experience of we can in the book we have lots of stories where we share where people companies did it right and where they didn't do it right so you can learn a lot in every aspect i guarantee you that you will find something in the book that will help you build strength and build valuation in your company that's so exciting well i can't wait to get it i'm ordering it today and all right, we have a ticker running at the bottom for you. So again, it's exitrichbook.com forward slash buy. I would get that right away. And as Bernie Dorman used to say, when you when you find something like this, don't buy one, buy five. Spread that. That's part of the that's part of the giving. That's part of the legacy. That's part of the impact. So there's all kinds of um, bonuses that come along with ordering it early too. And if you or there's an opportunity to order, I had somebody yesterday order a hundred copies, so they wanted to share it, and they get all kinds of extra mm -hmm. bonuses. And and um, during this month, anybody that buys a book, for every book you buy, you actually get a chance to win a trip to my ranch here in Arizona, three days, two nights. So get your order in because we'll see it at exorichbook.com forward slash buy. Fantastic. All right. Everybody get your orders in. All right. So Sharon, I need to ask you a question. I ask all my guests and I want to know how do you live the I have today way, which is, you know, intentionally in the present moment. What is that for you? Well, there's a couple things that I like to share with people that have helped me along the way. And one is because I happen to be a champion warrior. I was raised by the queen of worry. And the definition of worry I learned a few years ago was to, uh, to worry is to pray for what you do not want. Think about it. And so when I figured that out, I said, okay, it's all about the law of attraction, which you mentioned earlier in the show. When I realized and I catch myself, I still have my little worry storms, but I catch myself and say, instead of concentrating on what I don't want to have happen, 
I reframe my brain and concentrate on what I do want to have happen. And it's really magical. You talk about your manifestation, exactly what you were saying. And then yeah. also, you know, I was raised by a father would ask me tonight, Sharon, have you added value to someone's world today? Mm -hmm. He's been gone 15 years as of yesterday. And I still ask myself that every single night. So to have the most value of today, to live today to the max, is through the gift of helping someone else, adding value to someone else's life. And you do, as you mentioned in your in your story ahead of time, you get it back. And that's my, my secret every single day is to always add value to someone's life and to always do something that propels my, my business forward. Mm. Beautifully said. Thank you so much. All right, one final piece of advice before you go. Uh, sure, the, it would be learn from yesterday, prepare for tomorrow, but live today. You are the CEO mm -hmm. of your own life and you are in control of your thoughts and your actions. So use them wisely today to create a better tomorrow. Thank you so much, Sharon. All right. And then for more information about Sharon, you can visit SharonLector.com or you can email Sharon directly at info at Sharon Lecter. The banner is up there and it's Sharon, S-H-A-R-O-N, Lecter, L-E-C-H-T-E-R. Thank you so much for being here at I Have Today. What a privilege and an honor. And um, you are really helping this world um, um, illuminate making the best investment, which is in themselves. And your work is extraordinary. And I cannot wait to read your book and, um, and support you in any way that I can. So thank you, Diane. I so appreciate you tremendously appreciate you and glad we reconnected. And I look forward to, to doing more together. Thank you. Me too. Me too. All right. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Take care. Amazing. She not amazing. Incredible. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to pivot to the mentor me segment. And this is a segment that we do every week where we take, I take, we, meaning me, myself, and I, <laughs> uh, take your questions and I coach you and mentor you live here on the show. And once we finish the segment, I'll tell you how you can send in your questions. You can either do it live on Facebook in the chat or you can uh, email us and I'll let you know how to do that after. All right, Kelly, I'm ready with the first question. Our family restaurant of 35 years had to close down because of the pandemic. What am I supposed to do now, Mary? Oh, Mary. Well, gosh, I hope you're watching this show live. Um, breathe that in for a second. That's big. Just like Sharon Lecter just said, We've got to be willing to allow doors to close so other opportunities can open and be available that are, again, like she said, they are sitting right in front of us. Everything that we want truly that we've ever asked for in our entire lives is literally uh, a, a vibration away. If you've ever asked for it, it's yours and it's done on a vibrational level. Now you have to align with it. So I know this is a challenging time for you and your family. Look at this as an opportunity to make changes in your life. Assess what was working with the business versus what wasn't working with the business. 35 years is a long time. Congratulations. That's, I mean, that's amazing. But what's next for you and how you figure that out? You said, what am I supposed to do now? Well, here's what you're supposed to do. And I'm going over a minute. I always do. What you're supposed to do now is you're supposed to be asking yourself the right questions. If I could do anything that I wanted to in my life, time and money were, weren't an issue. I could literally create anything I want. What would that be? Allow yourself to... Um, Oh, I see we have questions in the chat. Okay, allow yourself the opportunity to tap into that. Go back and you know, let your mind wander and think about, well, what would that be? 
Then also think about the things in your life that you love to do, you enjoy doing, that you're passionate about, that brings value to people, like Sharon said, where you can make an impact and a difference and feel fulfilled in your life, okay? While the restaurant's been great, maybe it's time to get out of that industry. And that's what you're supposed to do right now. Use this time where we're stuck inside to go inside and ask yourself those deeper questions because right now, all you have is today and you are a blank slate. You can be, do and have anything you want. Just do you, you just have to believe in it and then move forward and take action with it and get help with it. Get mentors, get advisors with it. And that's what I'm here to do for you. So I hope that helped you. Okay, I'm gonna go to the live question, Kelly. All right, Ahmed, what's the best age to invest in yourself? Oh, hi, Marty, I, I see some people here. All right, so uh, I'm I'm butchering your name. It's Abdul Mead. so I'm sorry. I'm gonna call you Ab, <laughs> sorry about that. So what's the best age to invest in yourself? This age, whatever age you are. You know, the expression of when's the best time to plant a tree and they say 20 years ago, but the second best day is today. Same thing, start investing in yourself today. And I know our guest Sharon Lecter would agree with this wholeheartedly. And even if it's, even if it's, if it's only a little bit, start the process of investing in yourself, whether you're putting the money in a savings account or you're you know, investing in the stock market or some other investment, but, but start moving money to invest in you. Think about your future. You know, um, Think about what you want it to be. What do you want your legacy to be? Do you wanna create financial freedom for your family, for your loved ones? You know, when, whatever that is, it's today. Don't put it off. Do not put it off until tomorrow because if this, Time hasn't has taught us anything. It's that we don't know how much time we're going to have. All right. So I hope that helped you. Feel free to write in the chat. And thank you so much for being here. I wonder why I'm not seeing the comments in the chat. We'll have to figure that out. Okay. One more question. I have some ideas that I want to turn into a business, but I don't know where to start. What advice do you have for me, Jessica? All right. Well, good for you. I love it. I love the entrepreneurial spirit. I love ideas. I love ideas. So here's what I would say to you. Um, you don't know where to start. Oh, uh, hey, coach. Thank you so much for being here. Elaine, thank you for your comment too. Thank you, Marty. Thank you all for being here live. Um, okay, so you have ideas. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, tell you that stay tuned because next week on the show, I'm going to have a very special invitation for you because if you have a product or if you have an idea for a product or service that you want to create without wasting time or money, stay tuned for my upcoming webinar. So that is perfect. This is the time we are creators. We are here to create. You have ideas and that's what you're here to do. So so right now, what I would say to you is you have some ideas for a business, but you don't know what it is. Start writing them down, write them down, start flushing them out, clarify them. Now, now part of the reason, part of the exercise is, you know, write down the ideas, but then write down your why. Well, why, why does this matter? Why is this important to me? How will this help others? You know, define what, what that, pain you're you're alleviating or the pleasure that you're causing is the benefit from these ideas right i would jot them all down okay don't don't filter yourself you know write them all down because what you can then do is look at them and look for any similarities any theme that's going on with it all right that would be the very first place to start. The second thing I would say to do, and again, doesn't have to be me, but get on a call with a coach, a business coach, a mentor. Uh, you know, I'm an inventor. You know, I, I run two businesses. Um, sign up for a strategy session with me so we could take all of that and build you a roadmap. Okay. All right. So 
I hope that that helped you. Thank you guys so much for your questions. So if you want to be coached live here on the show by me, you can write, you can go to dianeforster.com forward slash mentor me, dianeforster.com forward slash mentor me. And you can ask me anything, anything related to business, to life, to health, you know, our four pillars here, love, money, success, and happiness, anything that you have going on, I'm happy to do it. So, okay. Show's going, moving so fast today. I can't believe it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we have a new segment and it is called word of the week. So now if you, if you're, if you're familiar with me, I'm big on language. We're all manifestors and law of attraction is never off. And it's always what we're thinking is creating the way we're feeling, which is creating the way we're speaking, which is creating our outcomes and our manifestations. So I focus a lot on language. So Kelly said to me, I think we need to add a new segment to the show where I'm going to, I'm going to pick a word and I'm going to surprise you. I have no idea what it is. And, and what I need to do then is help you reframe it. Okay. So let's give it a whirl. Okay. This is the first time we're doing it. So fun. All right, Kelly, what's the word? The word of the week is poor. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to try to match the new word with the same letter as this word. So poor. Oh, okay. I want you to replace poor with prosperity. If you use the word poor or think poor thoughts or say, I can't afford it, I'm so poor. I know that's a, a younger generation word. They're, they use that a lot. Um, you're attracting more of that. You're attracting more lack. So I want you to wipe out that word from your vocabulary. Let's just start today on, on day one of the new season. Let's start today with that being the first word. Don't use that word anymore in your vocabulary. Replace the thoughts the feelings of it and the language of it from poor to prosperity. I feel prosperous. Prosperity is all I experience in my life. I am prosperous every way. How can I bring more prosperity into my life? And not just financially in all areas of your life, but prosperity. So replace poor with prosperity. All right. That's fun, Kelly. <laughs> Love it. All right. So let me do a quick recap. Um, if you don't mind, can you do, do me a favor here and um, turn that around for me so I make sure I don't leave anything out of the show today that I wanted to include? All right. So there's something that I've been working on for a while, and it's live now, and I'm very excited about it. And so if you're struggling with mindset, challenges, you know, negative thoughts, you know, mental blocks, you know, pain from the past, just can't get out of the rut, you know, or you feeling stuck in any way, which I know a lot of people are suffering from right now. I created a free challenge for you called the Mindset and Manifestation Six Day Challenge. And for six days, I am going to take you through a guided opportunity for you to figure out, you know, what, where these limiting beliefs come from, you know, what the science behind mindset, the power of your thoughts, the power of your language, how the manifestation process really works, tapping into a secret that even the movie, The Secret didn't cover, how to set yourself up for success through a powerful morning routine. Um, I do more word eliminations and reframing that the vocabulary replacement movement in the challenge. And then I round it off with this groundbreaking exercise that brings the whole thing home that it, I promise you is going to shift your life. So that again, this is a free challenge that I'm offering you. And it's at Mindset and Manifestation Challenge. So I wanted to share that with you right now. So go to that link, register. Now here's the deal. Commit to the challenge. Commit to the six days. It's about 20 minutes a day for six days. That's it. So I'm bringing it to you and choose commitment over convenience because if you don't show up to do it, it's not going to work, right? So I just want to give you a little bit of, you know, finger point and coaching going, God, commit to it, do it. So that's there available for you. 
And then um, I also want to invite you to follow me on social media. We're going to have the links for all of this in the closing credits of the show. So be sure you stay until the end because we're getting ready to do our live mantra meditation. Um, but something that's new that's not on there is Clubhouse. And if you're not on Clubhouse yet, um, you're, you're going to be hearing more and more about it. Right now, it's for iPhone users only. It's an app and it's a communication and networking app. And follow me there at, at Diane Forster. And I host two rooms there. I host on Tuesdays from 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific time, uh, Mindset and Manifestation. And I teach you the art of intentional living. So if you would enjoy this show and you'd like to hop on over there as well, where you can actually raise your hand, get on stage and ask me questions I'm happy to have you there. I'd love for you to be there. So follow me there. And then also I follow that at nine o'clock AM with a power hour of laser coaching, hundred percent coaching. So check that out at clubhouse. All right. All right. So here we are at the end of the show, we're getting ready to do our live mantra meditation. And I'm going to take in all the fabulousness that Sharon Lecter shared with us today. The theme of the show our intention statement, and really empower you to take everything that you've experienced today. Let me turn that over. Um, yeah. Um, everything you've experienced today and let it really sink in and anchor you so that you leave this show in inspired action, feeling better at the end of the show than you did at the beginning of the show. How does that sound? All right. So everybody, if you're driving, obviously keep your eyes on the road, but you can still tune into this for everybody else, wherever you are, stop whatever you're doing, put the phones down, shut the computers or whatever it is, no distractions, tune in and be present with me for these few minutes. All right. Feet flat on the floor, put your hands on your lap, close your eyes. Now we're gonna take in a deep breath for the count of four. We're gonna hold it for four seconds and then we're gonna breathe it out for eight like we're blowing out birthday candles and we're gonna do this two times. Here we go. Ready, breathe in for four. Hold it for four and breathe out for eight. Let's do it again. Breathe in for four. Hold it for four and breathe out for eight. And just listen to the words. I have today to love my life. Something really good is going to happen to me today. I can feel it. Miracles, big and small. I notice them all. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I have today to invest in me first, to give everything to me first as I am the best investment there is to make. I am worthy, I am deserving. I surround myself with people who lift me up and know my value. They bring value to my life. I also exude value to all those in my world. I bring value to people every single day, just like Sharon Lecter does. I use this life and use my power and use my worthiness to invest in others, invest in my ideas, invest on helping people, invest on making this world a better place. There is no better time than today to live in action for living to my highest, greatest, fullest potential. To live a life where I'm soaring instead of crawling. I am living big instead of living small. I'm releasing fear, doubt, shame, worry, anything that makes me feel less than the beautiful, brilliant, creator than I am, here to learn, grow, and expand every day. And so I'm going to use this day and each day forward to continue to invest in the best investment in the world, and that is me.
And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you got a lot of value out of the show today. It's been ex so exciting to be back. Um, again, you can follow us on social media, social media, follow me at I have today with Diane Forster on YouTube and my Facebook page. That's where you can catch the show. All other social media is Diane Forster official. The new one is clubhouse at Diane Forster and make an appointment to be here every week. Share this with your friends and your family for those who could really be inspired by this work. All right. So thank you so much for being here again. It's Diane Forster. This is I have today and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.